Casper family, it's Louis Crypto here. We're going to discuss what Casper is doing in the immediate short term and also what we can expect in the midterm. Now, if you tuned into my last Casper update, which was the very first one, we were talking about this huge bearish divergence that we're seeing on the higher time frames. And Casper has never experienced this before on the really high time frames like the five day slash weekly. We're gonna dive into that today. So just before we do that, please like, subscribe, uh, comment if you can, share it if you can. And yeah, just please do enjoy this video. Now, I know this Casper community is much like the quant community in that we just want to hear bullish news. And of course, we all want the same. And we can see since the inception, it is pretty much just going up. And this is great work from Casper and the team. But the reality is nothing goes up forever. In fact, if you have been following along with my quant updates, for over a year, well, from ne for nearly a year now, going back to October slash November last year, we were calling for a dead cat bounce to happen. Now it's nearly taken a year for it to happen, but within that nearly year period, I've been getting constant hate. And it's, I'm not, there's nothing against the token. I'm personally invested in them, but I'm not just going to believe and follow the herd and just believe that there's only one way that this chart is going, which is up. And we're now seeing quant slowly coming down and following along from what I said back in October, November last year. Now, I'm not saying it's gonna take as long with Casper, but it's just something to keep in mind. Don't get it twisted. This thing doesn't only go up, even though it's just showing that. So we ha can't ignore the divergences, guys. So what I saw on Casper was on the five-day time frame. I'm now just going to see if there was some on the daily time frame. So right now, we've got this high over here at the one fib level, 42750 and we've got this even higher point so a higher high confirming that this is an uptrend at 5190 now we do have higher highs on the chart i want to see if we're seeing this on the indicators over here so this high point uh, let me just double check because the divergence i was talking about was on the five day time frame but we do see that we have lower highs on this indicator so this indicator is not in agreement with the chart and this is why we call it a divergence and this would be a bearish divergence. So the chart is saying that we are expecting this uptrend to continue. We just need to form a higher low above this low as this was the last deep correction. All we need to do is hold above this. We've got higher lows. We should then see higher highs. So even if we come down deeper and deeper, it would still be fine to eventually go up higher. But as of now, we can see from this point over here being this top, we've got the lower highs. So the dump over here is explained. Now I want to move up to even higher time frames. And as you can see, there's not more information than this over here uh, on the indicator. The chart does, but the indicator itself is just showing these two blue clouds and how this one is higher than the one on the right. So we've got lower highs over here, whereas the chart is showing higher highs so this is the very first bearish divergence on the five day time frame. This is what, I was, what we were looking at in the last Casper update. I think it was on Monday. Now I did not look at the weekly with you guys and I haven't looked at it personally myself, but I just want to see, we don't have the dots, but we can see the clouds again, lower highs. It doesn't necessarily put a nail in the coffin. We need to see further things confirming that we are going to go down, but it's something to really keep an eye on. It's basically saying that there's disagreements with the chart and this indicator. So again, bearish divergences. I wouldn't even be surprised if we do continue up a little bit higher. In the last video update, we were saying that we got trapped underneath the one fib level. And if this is used as resistance, then that's where we get this dump back down where we lose the, 50, uh, the 20 over here and start to head more towards the 55 moving average, maybe in around 2.6 to 2.7 cent. Even if I am calling for a dump or giving you at least a plan. So if it does happen, you've got a plan to follow along. I also give you a plan to the upside as well. And you just see which one plays out and you're like, okay, Louis prepared me for this one and this one. We wait and see which one happens. Okay, this A is happening instead of B. I'm now gonna follow that A plan that Louis said basically. If you do appreciate me always looking out for both sides, then yeah, leave a comment or just leave a like or whatever it does actually help the, the algorithm bump up the, the, the views and more eyes get, get uh, coming onto the channel for the first time. So we did not hold the one fib level as resistance. We didn't see wicks to the upside over here like how we did over here and over here. 
So we need to see those bearish candlestick signals. So right now we are continuing to come up. If we want to see these price targets, and again, whether that's now in the immediate short term or in the midterm, you can still come down and then eventually go up to there. Just know if we do come down, even better opportunity for you guys. If we don't you're, and you're already invested, then we might get those gains. But what I would need to see is a daily, oh, this is the five day. So five day candle close above 5190. If we want to head to six, seven, and potentially nine and a half cent, almost 10 cent. So if we go back to the daily right now, look at this a little bit clearer. We still got 10 hours of the current day left. So this could all change. We could be up here. We could be back below the one fib level. Let's keep an eye out on the daily candle close. If it closes underneath the one fib level or just the purple box in general, then it's looking to come back down again. You do have your moving averages support, so maybe get short term bounce and then come down. So just keep that in mind. I'm now going to show you targets to the upside if we do continue higher. So we have created the reverse wave. It's not yet confirmed though. So what we've now done with the fibs is measured this move down, expecting a pump into this location before uh, a dump basically. But you can uh, invalidate this path just by pushing through those golden lines, orange lines, golden lines, doesn't matter. But we've now pushed through that. That's great. That's the first step of invalidating this path down. It could still happen because you can retrace to the 786 fib as we now have done and still have a throwback, basically a fake out confirm as resistance and still go on this path downwards to that range, uh, yeah, range over here down at 2.6, it's about 2.8. We've also got the 200 EMA on the daily time frame there. We were looking on the five day showing that, yeah, we've got some confluence in around this area. So nice to see that the 200 daily EMA is there. It's basically saying if this all collapses, that's where you're coming down to and you still be fine. You still be maintaining the uptrend. So. Even though I'm preparing or giving you a plan for a crash, it would still, it's like a bullish one. And we would still expect higher price targets eventually. If things change, like for example, if we lose the 200 EMA and we lose the golden pocket over here, then we're changing the path, we're changing the trajectory, we're changing the macro trend, okay? And so that's where we'd have to reevaluate uh, uh, what we're doing. And then yeah, look for new paths to the downside. But as of now, you are trying to break out. What I need to see, if we zoom in again, we need to see this golden pocket area flipped into support and a break of that one Fibonacci for us to get to six, 5.9 to, uh, to 7.3 cents over here. This would be your targets. So if again, we even if we confirm this support but fail to break above the one fib level and in any point in time, so just have this in the back of your mind at any point in time now that we are above these golden lines, if we ever do lose them completely and flip them into resistance where we see wicks to the upside over here, this could be short signals to come back down lower to at least this level where you might get a bounce and then eventually come down to the 200 EMA. So if we now keep failing to break out over here, we're going to see an eventual retest of this 200 EMA at any point in time. If we do hold it support like we did in the past over here, this would be a good entry point. But if you go ahead and lose this, you're changing the trend to a downtrend. Just understand that. I hope this was of value for you guys today. I'm not a perma bear. I'm also not a perma bull. I'm just a messenger that's just trying to get out all the information out there as much as possible and not just say this is only going up. I know that it just has since its inception, but we just can't be stuck in that frame of mind. As again, going back to the quant example, back up at $200 last year, I was saying get out of quant at $200. We met one of my targets and I was saying a dead cap bounce is going to form where we could drop down to the $80, $80 region. We've gone as low as $85. And I've called that from October, November time last year when we were at 200 plus dollars. So it took a long time. It took until this month slash last month for that to play out all the way from November last year. So 10 months, I don't know how many months exactly, 10, 11 months, guys. So it's not something to ignore this bearish divergence over here. Now, not only do we see on the daily time frame with lower highs, and higher highs a disagreement, but also on the five day time frame with lower highs and higher highs in disagreement. It doesn't necessarily, again, need to play out as of this moment. We can have one more rally up and still come back down. But again, this dump for the moment, as long as we hold this key area where we form this inverse head and shoulders over here, we confirm this area of support. 
this range as long as we maintain so even if it dumps down like this even if we pump up a little bit more and dump down into this area it's still fine because you're holding that low still be a higher low we'd have a high a low a higher high or let's say it goes up to their high high and this would still be a high low so just plan for it not necessarily going to happen keep your eyes on it can't ignore these bearish divergences but it'd be like a bullish dump as long as it maintains this low forms a higher low and we do break out again otherwise we could form a lower high come down and lose this and you're changing the macro trend that would be a huge m pattern one top two top that's what's potentially happening right now i want to know your thoughts in the comment section below i know most of you are going to say this is up only but i want to know your thoughts on this bearish divergence go check it out on other charts uh, they do tend to play out thank you guys so much for tuning in don't forget to like subscribe and comment and if you do want to take action on the three months totally free on the discord message me over on x slash twitter.com you can just join the discord anyway if you don't want to take action on the education we do weekly group calls share my investments students in there as 95 percent of them have been taught by me whether that's the course or the mentorship are also sharing their trade ideas but this is not specifically a signals group chat just a place for everyone to share their thoughts and ideas and again fundamental news as well if they want to thank you guys